guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some moisturizers that are really good to use if you happen to be using retinol. When I say retinol, I'm including all forms of topical vitamin A. So retinol is what is most commonly found over the counter in all of your anti-aging wrinkle serums. You also can find retinaldehyde, another effective form of topical vitamin A used to improve the look of wrinkles. And then of course you have prescription retinoic acid, AKA tretinoin. You also have prescription tazeratine, AKA Tazerac and you have uh, Adapalene, aka Differin, which here in the States you can buy over the counter. Um, so those of you who have watched any number of my retinol videos at this point, I have a whole playlist of them, by the way, you know that uh, this is an effective ingredient that is pursued for improvement of acne, as well as for anti-aging benefit of removing sun-damaged skin cells, boosting up collagen production, and smoothing out fine lines. Retinols can be and are often very irritating when you first start them. They can lead to a lot of peeling and dryness. The extent to which that occurs depends a lot on your background skin type, how much sun damage you have. For some people who have acne, that irritation can translate into a temporary worsening of the acne. A lot of people refer to this as purging, uh, but a lot of it just has to do with the irritation that happens. One of the best things that you can do to help ensure success with using topical retinol is to use moisturizer consistently. This is so important. This has been shown in studies uh, of patients with acne that when they use moisturizer as part of their skincare routine, they get they tolerate the retinol better and they get better results with it. As far as incorporating moisturizer into your skincare routine when using retinol, there's really no right or wrong way to do it, so don't lose too much sleep over it. But the way I counsel people to incorporate the moisturizer along with the retinol is you should always apply retinol to clean skin. So you're gonna start off by washing the face at nighttime to remove dirt, oil, cosmetics. When you rinse the cleanser off, that's when you wanna apply moisturizer right away to automatically start reducing water loss out of the skin. Allow the moisturizer to absorb fully and dry fully, and once it's done so, then you can put the retinol on or you know prescription uh, vitamin A. This will reduce irritation. When it comes to choosing a moisturizer, I'm obviously gonna get into the good ones here, um, but really what you wanna look for is fragrance-free because the addition of fragrance, it can add potential risk of irritation, which is the last thing you want when you're going through the irritation of retinol. You don't wanna add more irritation to that. Uh, the other thing you want to avoid in your moisturizer is moisturizers that are formulated with alpha hydroxy acid or beta hydroxy acid, aka salicylic acid, because these exfoliate the skin a little bit and they can cause more irritation and you know make things worse for you. And in some cases, they might actually compromise the stability of the topical vitamin A. When it comes to moisturizers, you have creams and you have lotions. Lotions are more water-based and more lightweight, whereas creams are more oil-based and they're gonna give you a better reduction overall in that trans-epidermal water loss in comparison to lotions. But for some people with really oily skin, they don't care for heavy creams on their face. So it's a matter of personal preference, but a brand that works really well for most skin types because it's pretty no nonsense is good old Vanny Cream. So they make a moisturizing cream that again is much thicker and they make a lotion that is more lightweight. Both of these would be a fantastic choice. Really no nonsense, um, very short ingredient list, highly recommend. This would be a great choice. And then next, of course, we have everyone's favorite, CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. You know, not only is this going to help address issues with dryness through the hydrating ingredients that it has, it's got humectants in it, but it also has ceramides in it, which can help encourage your skin barrier to go about restoring itself. This is a great choice. However, many people find that it burns or stings. And when you're going through the retinization process as it's called, meaning you're getting used to the retinol and you're having a lot of peeling, you're going to be more sensitive to that and you may find that this just burns and stings. Um, another CeraVe option though that is actually much thicker than the cream is the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream. This one has, again, the ceramides in it, but it's much thicker. It has shea butter in it and so give this a try if you're really battling with that retinization process. I find that it's a lot easier for people to tolerate. Less, they're less likely to report burning and stinging with this. Feels more comfortable and it's really 
I feel it's a little more intense as far as putting the brakes on that trans epidermal water loss, just because it's a thicker vehicle overall. So that would be another really good choice. Now, if you prefer lotions, you might wanna try CeraVe PM facial lotion. Avenz Zeracom AD uh, Lipid Replenishing Cream, another phenomenal choice. Free of fragrance, Aven, all of their products are formulated with their thermal spring water, which is used in uh, eczema treatment centers in France. And you know, there's some thought that that's really helpful in um, promoting a healthy skin microbiome and reducing flares of eczema and helping with skin barrier repair. This particular moisturizing cream also has an ingredient in it derived from the bacteria in that thermal spring water that has been shown to kind of facilitate an anti-inflammatory uh, profile in the skin and help with repair. Again, a very short ingredient list and I personally like that it comes in this pump. You can see this is a nice thickness. Now they also make a balm, which is a lot thicker than this. I actually recommend the cream. I think the balm is a little too thick and you don't wanna run into issues where you have to question if the if the retinol is actually getting in. Creams is generally fine and lotions generally fine, but when things start to get to the consistency of like Vaseline, then you have to question, is, it, is, is your retinol actually able to penetrate through that? Um, but this is, this is a great one to, to select. Now, another moisturizer that I highly recommend is the La Roche-Posay Lipicare AP Balm. I like this because like the CeraVe Skin Renewing uh, Night Cream, this has shea butter in it as well, uh, which again, as I said, is really good for, really good for putting the brakes on that trans epidermal water loss. This is really, this one in particular is especially good if you have a lot of peeling, which is to be expected. You know, a lot of people when they experience that peeling, the temptation is to pick and to attempt to exfoliate that, but really you don't wanna do that because the peeling is exfoliation. And if you pick or attempt to remove it, you're kind of just encouraging more and that ends up leading to irritation. Instead, you wanna put a nice soothing moisturizer on to kind of help with skin barrier recovery. And those cells will, you know, slough off off as you go through that retinization process and within a few weeks that will die down or should die down. Similar to La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm is Cetaphil Redness Relieving Night Moisturizer. I always rave about this in a lot of videos. It's also got shea butter and niacinamide in it so the shea butter is great for trapping in hydration and the niacinamide is anti-inflammatory and helps with skin barrier restoration. It also has caffeine in it, which is anti-inflammatory and can kind of help in calming down redness. If you have really red, red, redness prone skin and you're suffering with that as you go through the retinization process, consider this one. It will kind of help address those issues and soothe the skin barrier, making the uh, vitamin A form more easy to tolerate. A moisturizer that I love, but actually it's kind of getting hard to find, is DML Forte with Panthenol. Panthenol is great. It is a wonderful humectant, so it adds hydration to the skin, but it also helps with skin barrier restoration. It's really comfortable on oily skin types. It doesn't feel greasy or oily. Um, so this is a favorite. I also recommend this in my video on skincare products to use while on Accutane. Uh, really nice thick cream that's really going to put the brakes on water loss and help reduce irritation from, from retinol. And then last but not least is the QV cream. This you can get, I believe in the UK and Australia. I love this. It's kind of similar to Vanny Cream's moisturizing cream. Very no nonsense, very short ingredient list. Um, and it, you know, I mean, these all start to, these all start to kind of look similar, but you can see it's a, it's a nice cream. This feels really good to put on. I mean, these all do. So this would be another great choice. Those are the moisturizers I recommend for people on retinol, but honestly, there are so many moisturizers out there that are good. Um, really, again, what you wanna look for, short ingredient list, fragrance-free, just kind of bland, 
not touting any exotic ingredients, botanic extracts, just to minimize that risk of irritation. And you also wanna make sure that your moisturizer doesn't have salicylic acid in it or alpha hydroxy acid. These are great ingredients in moisturizers and you'll find them in products aimed at people with rough and bumpy skin, but they can increase the irritancy of the topical retinol, so you just don't wanna use them together. This dryness and irritation, it should only last for a few weeks. If you're getting peeling and discomfort beyond that, it's a time to give your derm a call and kind of figure out what's going on. It could be that you, know, you need to reduce the frequency of use of the retinol, or it could just be that maybe you're using some other product or ingredient that's adding irritation to the skin. There are numerous potential reasons, but I would say try and avoid the temptation to pick any peeling skin, really what that will do is cause more irritation. The peeling is exfoliation. So if you attempt to exfoliate exfoliation, you can run into problems. I recommend using moisturizers first, allowing them to absorb fully and then applying the retinol, but you certainly can apply them afterwards. In fact, that's what retinoic, tretinoin, you know, if you read the instructions, that's what it tells you to do. But you know, there's no consensus that that is the best way, and it's been shown to be effective either way. Um, so you, you know, in my opinion, in my experience, I find that people tolerate it better if they put the moisturizer on first. But you may have the opposite experience personally, in which case, keep doing what works. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.